Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, and we acknowledge, Devla, that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. And there's none like you, Jesus. Akana, Devla, we ask you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would move freely in this place. And Devla, Saranel, Devla, O Pastor, Devla, Chidi Wodba, Father God. I pray, Devla, that your word would pierce our hearts, Father God. I pray, Father God, that your word, Devla, would fall on good soil, Devla, at that, Devla. Open up our heart, our ears, Father God, our mind, Father God, our soul, Father God, I pray. I pray, Father God, that we would be able to hear your word, Devla, and not only hear it, Father, but be doers, Devla, of your word. Anoint him, Devla, for your glory, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Give God some glory, church. Thank you, Jesus. I want to make a quick announcement. I know there's not a lot of people here, but uh, just because it's the new year and happy new year to everyone, we're going to start something next Sunday. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to start a seven-day prayer in church. Now, we're not going to do it on Sunday because we're going to meet here at, at like 9.30, 9 o'clock, 9.30. But on Sundays, I'll do it online. We'll pray. We'll give a teaching. And then Monday, we'll meet here. Tuesday, we'll meet here. Wednesday, we'll meet here. Thursday, we'll meet here. Friday, we'll meet here. Saturday, we'll meet here. Sunday, I'll do it online again. And we'll have seven days of not only just prayer, but listen, we're going to talk about one subject that's prayer. But we're going to read one verse, and that's Kaipendazo Jesus, Sante Rujizami. We're going to break that up in seven parts. And if you truly want to learn, those that are watching on the internet, if you're here in the city, if you truly want to learn the God designed prayer, because God didn't design the prayer, Temotaz, word for word, our Father, water in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He didn't design it that way. There's a design there. It's a blueprint. And we're going to learn that within the seven days. And we're going to petition God within those seven days. We're going to come to God and pray for what we need, what we're asking God for. But also, we're going to grow. So I would encourage the people that are here to come here starting next week. And also let someone know they have in. Let's fill this place with prayer warriors. Amen. Let's become prayer warriors in 2024 for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, I had the uh, title, Bushel, uh, we're, are we working on resolution or relationship? And I know resolutions to guys, you can know Divano, but Pachama, Rom do it too. And we make promises at the beginning of the year. It's a, it's a fresh start. It's a fresh start. It's a new slate. And we make these promises. But listen to me. One really is expected to fail it's expected to fail on new year's resolution well this year i'm going to lose some weight well i do that 365 days a year every day i get up i'm on top today i'm going to start my diet it's expected to fail well i'm going to be a better person this year by march you're the same jerk you was well, I'm going to do the things that uh, I'm going to get. I'm, 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 I'm going to I'm going to work harder. I'm going to. I'm gonna... No, you're not. You're going to do that for a couple months and then you're going to fail. It's just the way it's designed. But if we're working on relationship, relationship was designed by God to last forever. Not a few months. Not a few weeks. But forever. Odelpen Nazvaraso. When the Israelites were in the desert, Pinga, make me a tent so I can be with my people. God desires to have a relationship with us. And that's what we should work on this year. Not resolutions that are designed to fail, but relationship that's designed to last forever. You get me? Relationship. God del Duma, a Bible, Pamendi. It talks a certain way. The Bible mentions you a certain way. Look how the Bible mentions you. It calls you the bride. You can't be a bride without a relationship. It's, well, it's either good or bad. But you can't be a bride without a relationship. And then the Bible says that we are the children of God. We're sons and daughters of God. You can't be a son or daughter without a relationship. Well, I never had a relationship with my father. I never had a relationship, but it doesn't matter. You had a bad relationship. Either way, you had a relationship. 
You can't be a, ch a child of someone and not have a relationship. And the Bible calls you the bride. It calls you the, the, the child. And then it calls you a friend. You're the friend of God. And you can't be a friend without a relationship. Now, buddy, we've got, we all got friends. And some we've got good relations with, with and some we've got bad relationships with. But the bottom line is that if you don't work on the relationship, it's never going to get better. That's the bottom line. And it's the same thing. But here's what I want to tell you. God doesn't have to work on the relationship. God did it all. Tradazo del le Christos, pesca Chavez, he left heaven, came on this ugly, filthy earth, lived here for 33 years, died on the cross, and went back to his rightful place. He doesn't have to work on relay. He did all. He showed how much he cares, how much he loves. He showed us how much he invested into relationship. Here's what we got to do. We got to work on it. We got to work on it while we're here. Amen? What makes, what makes a bad relationship? What does a bad relationship look like? Here's the first thing. Bad communication you don't talk to each other you don't know what goes on you ever talk to someone at Pusha's day what's going on with so-and-so I don't know I haven't talked to him no communication so you got no answers you can't hang around with somebody and expect to know them if you don't talk to them I can drive 500 miles with Zofi and she won't say a word but it's the truth. Some people don't, but I'm a talker. I like, I got, when I kind of to know, we went from Boston to California. Right, Dad? I Ogajo that was driving our truck, Jack, kicked me out of the truck. Take this kid out of the truck. He talks too much. It's the truth. You can't get to know somebody if you don't talk to them. Right? If you don't talk to them, have a, a, a conversation with them. How do we talk to God? Somebody tell me, how do we talk to God? Prayer. Prayer. How do we pray? So in the morning, we wake up. We all do this. Lord, arakami. Leme sama devla. Lord, provide for us. Oh, Lord, you know we need this. We need that. Lord, take care of us. I got to go about my day. Somewhere about 12 o'clock, if you're me, it's somewhere around 2 o'clock. You're going to get hungry. I'm a toast, oh Lord, bless this food in Jesus' name. And then later on, you're going to get tired and you're going to go to bed. And that body motos, Lord, Arakami, Cho protection, Pemendi Devla, Demesama, good night. And then some of us come to the altar and pray. That's the majority of our prayers, right? I mean, some of us may say, well, I pray more than that. I pray very often and that's great but how much how many of us pray like this and this goes for me Jesus on Matthew 6 verse 6 but when you pray go away by yourself shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private then your father who sees everything will reward you how many of, how many of us get away just to talk to God how many of us can work on that? Oh, Jesus was still on the morning. Oh, Jesus was still on the morning. And the disciples would see him early in the morning going somewhere in a quiet place to pray. I am who says, Lord, watch over my kids, watch over us. Okay, got to go. But the relationship's not going to get better unless we do this. Unless we take some time out. To really pray, to really talk to God, to really seek God and say, Lord, listen, I don't care what's going on today. I don't care how busy I am, but I got to build my relationship with you. I got to talk to you. I got to have some time with you. He desires that. Do I desire that? Communication for us is speaking to God, right? Communication to all for us is praying to God. But you can't have a one-way conversation. How many of us know people? I just didn't do ma. 
And then they talk and they talk and they talk. And she didn't do chance to this Duma. You just listen to them. That's it. You just got to listen to them. Well, that's sometimes what we do. That's Duma le devles on prayer. But how many of us know how God speaks to us? See, we talk to God through prayer. But how many know how God speaks to us? Well, I get this feeling right here. I get this feeling. I'm Listen, that sometimes that's the Holy Spirit, but sometimes that could be just some bad food you ate or your emotions. Josh. The only way we know for sure Sadel Duma de la Mensa is through the Word of God. And let me ask you something. How good, let's put this in perspective. How good of a relationship would it be, Santino? If seven, if six days a week, I talk to you. But only one day out of the week, I allow you to speak to me. That'd be a terrible relationship. It'd be a terrible relationship with your kids. It'd be a terrible relationship with your wife. It'd be a terrible relationship with your husband. It'd be a terrible relationship with anyone in your life if for six days you talk and talk and talk and talk and then on one special day you allow them to talk for just about 20 minutes. Well, that's what happens with most of us. Every morning we pray, we pray, we pray every day, six days a week and then only on Sundays we hear from him. That's a poor relationship. Joshua. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful in whatever you do. Keep the book of the law always uh, on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. So that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. That book of the law he's talking about, we call that the Bible. I owe Joshua Moto, Odell Moto for Joshua, meditate on it day and night. Because it's going to direct you. It's going to make you successful. It's going to take care of you. It's going to give you wisdom. It's going to give you knowledge. Let me talk to you. Odelmo told, this is the way I chose to talk to you. Let me talk to you. Because when I talk to you, you're going to get out of the jam. You're going to get out of the problem. Sometimes we got to just listen. Sometimes we just got to put on the word of God. Today it's very simple. You can put on the, make, this thing can read the Bible for you. You can put on the TV. Araktu sasunis. Be careful what you hear. But don't just have a conversation where God is speaking for 20 minutes once a week. Dixon Motoli Bible, all scriptures, 2 Timothy 3.16, all scriptures God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness. You want to build a relationship with God? Let Him speak to you through His Word. He's going to teach you. He's going to rebuke you. You're not supposed to rebuke. It sounds like a bad word because we use it towards the devil. Rebuke Him in Jesus. But rebuke just means correct. He's going to correct you going to put you back on the right path then he's going to teach you don't do that again but we'll never do that we'll never learn we'll never grow if we're not listening to what God is breeding through this when God speaks to us he's speaking to this what does a bad relationship look like not spending time with each other no fellowship can't have a good relationship with somebody if you're not spending time with them Read some totally Bible he will also keep you from firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. Bible. He'll keep you. He did his part. He did his part. He's faithful to do his part. He already did his part. And he'll keep you to the end. He'll keep you firm in him. God is faithful. He has called you into fellowship with his son Jesus Christ our Lord. Dikshabadijila. He's called us into fellowship. He wants to have fellowship with us. Man. There's a lot of people that you don't want to have fellowship with because you think you're better than them. 
I don't want to. I don't want to deal with this guy. I odelo baro. God Almighty says, I want to have fellowship with you, a wretched sinner, a guy that fails every day, fall on your face every day. But it's okay. I want to have fellowship with you. How important is that? How many are willing to build on the relationship of spending time with God? Big Samuel told, Second Corinthians six, fourteen through seventeen. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light and darkness have? What harmony is there between Christ and Biel? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are a temple of the living God. As he said, I will live with them and walk among them and I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separated. Give God some glory. Where do you spend your time? Are you spending time with things that unbelievers spend their time with? I don't hang around there. Just earlier we talked about somebody going to a place and they felt uncomfortable and because they knew they weren't supposed to be there. Because God doesn't hang, hang out in those places. So I feel uncomfortable. Is it going to take me to help? I don't know. Probably not. But as a Christian, you're not working on your relationship when you're hanging out in places that God doesn't hang out. You're not working on your relationship. You're not growing in the relationship that he wants to have with you. When we're hanging out in dark places, the Bible told he's light. You don't hang out in dark places. And when we go to those dark places, it may feel fun, but sooner or later, we got to come here and we got to pray and we remind her, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I went to that place and I messed up. I'm sorry. And listen to me, that's not worth it. We'll learn lessons and true life we're going to learn lessons. But that's not worth it. They, that's why the Bible says count the cost. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? I'm sorry I messed up. We're all going to mess up. But we don't have to make the choice to mess up. He wants to walk among them. I will live with them, walk among them, and I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out. Come out from those unbelieving things. Come out from where unbelievers go. Come out from that place that's called the world. The world don't believe. Come out from the world. Be separate. That's where God has called us to be separate. When you're separate, you're working on your relationship. Well, here's another bad, what a bad relationship looks like. We're almost done. Lack of honesty and respect. You can't have a good relationship if you don't speak the truth with someone. And if you constantly disrespect them, your relationship's not going to grow. I'm talking just on a regular level. Manus kai lensa steady polajavdesli. Che fellow relationship that O manus kai traiz lensa steady hojavdesli. What kind of relationship is that? Did you scar moto first John? But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. You have fellowship with Jesus. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. See, when you walk in the light, you know that God has cleansed you. God has washed you. God has taken care of you. God has set you apart. God saved you. When you're walking in the light, God constantly reminds you, you're mine. I'm taking care of you. I'll, have to. I'll, I'll make sure nothing harms you. Even when you go through the waters and the fire, I'll be with you. When you're walking in the light, but when you're in the darkness, it gives step to the enemy. They will talk to God. God doesn't hear you. God doesn't love you. God doesn't care for you. So that's why we got to have fellowship with him in the light. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves 
and the truth is not in us. Depenantu, I'm a good guy, I don't need Jesus. Depenantu, chimutadem kanikaz, I don't need Jesus. You're a liar. Truth is not in you. We all need Jesus. Depenantu, well, I'm not a sinner. I don't need to say, God, forgive me, because I don't sin. I don't need to ask for forgiveness because I don't sin. You're a liar. We all fall short. And for relationship's sake, we all got to say, God, forgive me, because we all make mistakes. There was this big controversy about having to apologize to God, having to say, God, forgive me, and are you saved and then resaved? No. But listen, any relationship you have, I do kavezli, sorry fixes it. I can asan le devlesa, can adez, can asu relationship le devlesa. I too janez, Lord, I stepped out of the light and I walked in the darkness and I'm sorry. God forgive me. Body la shudders. Oh, Peter Penaz, Lord, don't just wash my feet, wash my whole body. I owe Jesus Penaz, you've already had a bad. All you need is a daily cleansing. All you need is te chalavav chipura where you've been. All you need is kaisanas. All you need is wherever you went, te chalavav chipura. That's all. To be right with me in my relationship. So for relationship's sake, mangcho yertimos. For if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. I'm sorry. And be honest with Him. And respect Him for who He is. I'm sorry. I messed up. I know I messed up. He's faithful. Listen. You're good. You're good. Go on. Let's go on. Let's keep walking together in the light. That's the kind of God he is. But Butivan, we think we're getting away with something. You're not getting away with anything. He knows everything. Not a bird falls from the tree he doesn't know. So just be honest with God. It's best. It's best for the relationship. That all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. I want to stop there. My Dumud, some of these gentlemen will know. My Dumud, there seemed to be a greater honor. Daranas le manuska talodel. I just, we're not, because we think Jesus is a lighter God. Chimai daraz katarodel. We don't honor him the way we used to. And the Bible told the fear of the Lord is wisdom. And that's not a fear of mudaroma. No, that's a fear of reverence. To honor him, to respect him. And it's funny because the closer we came to God, the way God made a relationship with him is through Jesus Christ. But now we feel that we don't have to be afraid anymore in that reverence. The Bible told, don't use your freedom to please the flesh. God has made you free, but he hasn't made you free to feed your flesh. He's made you free to glorify him. So honor him. Respect him with where you go, how you speak, how you live. You're saved by grace through faith. Hallelujah. Honor that grace. Honor that faith. Honor that act of Jesus dying on the cross with now how you live. Because that's the living sacrifice that he's looking for. No longer is there needed anymore a dead sacrifice. Christ died once and for all. But what God is looking for is a living sacrifice. Me and you saying no to sin through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what honors God. You can't have a good relationship if you're not honoring the other party. You can't have a good relationship if you're not being honest. You may look good with me, you may look good with other people, you may look good with the church, but God knows everything. And if you're trying to get away with it, you're not honoring Him. You're disrespecting Him. You ever heard this, Divano? Don't insult my intelligence. There's no one more smarter than God. And if you think you can live like hell and claim heaven, you insult God's intelligence. 
Here's another bad relationship. Suspicious minds and trust issues. Nobody can have a good relationship if you have a suspicious mind. What's going on here? What is he doing? What is she doing? You're never going to grow in your relationship like that. Well, I don't say, do, I don't do certain things. I'm, I, I, I got my own little, uh, you know, Medjinavo Lovek, Arkate, Nadi Kali family. You can grow in God if you don't trust your family, your children, your wife, your husband. You can grow in your relationship and you will not grow in God if you don't trust Him. He's proved that He's trustable. He's proved that He can be trusted. There's no reason you should have a suspicious mind. We leave God's will for the last when they're on the respirator. I'm going to tell God's will. But God's will is good. God's will is good for every one of us. We just trained ourselves not to trust it. And if we can learn how to trust His will, if we can learn how to put our trust in Him, that He's a good Father and He cares for us, man, our relationship will go beyond what we can imagine. Some Holy Bible, Proverbs 3 and 5 and 6. Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Don't try to figure it out yourself. It's not going to work. Lean on Him. Trust in Him. In all your ways, submit to Him. You got to trust someone to submit to them. You ever seen that, uh, that practice where someone's standing up and they fall behind and they expect the person behind them to catch them? That's submitting to the person behind you. We got to submit to God. God's not going to let you fall. God's gonna, not going to let disaster happen in your life. God's going to take care of you. You can trust God to catch you. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. We got to trust God. I want to tell you this story. Peter was in the boat with some disciples and there was a storm, a real bad storm. And they saw Jesus. And Peter said something. Ping a Lord, if it's you, on the Matthew 14, Ping a Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said to him, come. Now, if Peter had a suspicious mind, or an untrusting heart, he would never get out of the boat. Well, wait a minute. Is he tricking me? Does he want me to come? So, Does Jesus, is he calling me to Delma Polajav? Is he calling me to do Kavelma? Should I get out of the boat? No. The Bible says immediately, come, he said, and Peter got out of the boat and walked on water. I don't care if he walked for a minute, for an hour for a day Peter did the impossible he walked on water listen to me for the lack of water you get in trouble too much water you get in trouble oh Peter don't you care if we drown too much water is a problem and the lack of water is a problem Peter walked on the problem Give God some glory. Peter walked on the problem. Why? Because he didn't have a suspicious mind on God. Is God going to take something away from me? If I totally submit to God, will I have the same life I use, I'm used to? Don't have a suspicious mind. You can trust him. God will take care of you. He'll make you walk on water. He'll make you do what you never imagined you can do. He'll make you do the impossible. To me, it's impossible to walk on water. But Peter did. Peter did. Why? Because he trusted when he said, come. How many of us, is God is telling you, come. Trust me in this. Trust me in this. Get out of the boat. Trust me in this. You can leave it behind. You can do without it. I can take care of you. I'll make it happen. I'll, don't worry about it. Just trust me. Come. Don't have the suspicious mind. There's a little saying I say. I put it on Instagram all the time. On your mark, get set, let's grow. I think it's time for the church to grow. Grow in our relationship. It's time we grow in our relationship. We grew in everything. Listen to me. In everything we grew. 
Mai de mult, cine n-ați de rom de mansă, ai bușonați gypsy diamonds. Că calimos s-a zândră, but they had a flash, right? Just keep, I just want flash. I cannot G-certified mangan, mangan uh, information. Uh, is this, what color is this? What grade is it? What cut is it? We know everything. We grow in everything. We grow in everything. We learn how to buy houses, sell houses. There's people in Mejanama in Romania that they have the real estate license. We grow in every. When we put our mind to something, we grow in anything. And if you allow the Holy Spirit to help you build your relationship, you grow in your salvation. But you got to make the choice. You got to make the decision. It's not a resolution designed to fail. It's a relationship designed to be forever. And you got to make the choice. He's already made the choice. He's already committed. You know what? He's already signed in blood. It's up to you. It's up to me. Am I going to build my relationship this year with God? Or am I just going to live on a resolution? I'm going to be a better person. I'm going to be... It's designed to fail. But if you stay in His Word, have a conversation with Him every day, get alone with Him, have fellowship, walk with Him, talk with Him, If you don't have a suspicious mind, if you're honest with him and honor him, let me tell you something. God will let you walk on water. I want to walk on water this year. I want to see the things that I think is impossible happen. This year, I want to pray without doubting, without a suspicious mind. Will God answer? This year, I want to see God. I want to read the scriptures. I want to see the scriptures come alive. This year, I want my relationship to be greater with God than it's ever been. It's up to me. It's up to me to work on it. Dixon Bible, 2 Peter 3, 17 and 18. Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, tonight we've been forewarned. It's up to you. You can have a good relationship or a bad relationship. Be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure position but grow in the grace and the knowledge of your Lord Jesus to him be the glory both now and forevermore if you don't want to grow in your salvation you'll f- listen to me if you don't stand for something you'll fall for anything If you're not going to stand tonight and say, Lord, this year, I'm going to work on my relationship for you. There's nothing that's going to come across your way. Well, I don't know about that. Maybe that's right. No. When you stand for God and when you work on your relationship, you're going to know false doctrine. You're going to know when it's your voice, the devil's voice, or God's voice. Can I use, make the commitment, Lord, I want to work on my relationship. You're going to know nothing's going to carry you away. Nothing's going to carry you away from the position that God has given you. And the position he's given you is forgiven, righteous, sanctified, set apart. The position he's given you is a child, the bride, a friend. That's the position he's given you. Will you work? Will you grow? Will you grow in the, in the knowledge of the grace of the Lord Jesus, our Savior? Amaro Dele, Amaro Dad, Father. Tonight, Mohadel, my desire is to grow. I can't do it alone. I'll fail. Just like every resolution fails, if I try to be better without your spirit, I'll fail. So, Devla, me pushaftutar. And I pray that every heart listening tonight in this room and on the internet, every heart will say to themselves, Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me to build a better relationship with our God. Help me to talk to you more. Help me to listen more. Help me to allow you to talk more. Help me to walk in the light. Help me to walk with you, talk with you. Help me not to be suspicious. Help me not to be untrusting. Help me, Lord. Help me in all of the places that I fail. Help me, God. And I pray this. I pray, Lord, help me. Help me to build my relationship with you so we can do what Peter did. The impossible. Help us, God. Help us see the impossible this year. Help us to see the impossible this year. Because, Devla, we decided tonight not to make a resolution designed to fail, but to make, Devla, a relationship designed to last forever. Father, that you're preparing a place so we can be where you are forever. 
Lord, help us start that tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Church, I hope that everyone will...